Good morning, afternoon, in Nova Scotia at westcoatbellpottery.ca. Um, this is November 8th. Um, I'm going to do a video on a little Christmassy item that I make. Uh, it's a children's set, um, and I sell this all year long, actually, but it seems like at Christmas pe more people ask for them. Uh, it uh, can be done as a simple glazed stoneware piece, or as in this case, I make these um, with tiny little rabbits or tiny little cats on them uh, as a stencil piece. But it could actually be made in, in just any combination of any glazes. So I make a small plate, a small mug, and a small bowl, and it's sold as a set. Um, and it's been my way over the years, and I've no proof in this, but I'm trying to give things to little children, basically provide for little children so that they grow, grow up with it and grandparents usually buy it for their grandchildren and stuff so that uh, you're, you're basically inspiring a new generation of people to buy pottery um, 25 years from now big investment in time for maybe a long time away and maybe you won't be making pottery by then but i've always thought it's worth doing just because mm -hmm. i like to have something for little kids a one pound balls of clay probably just a little over maybe um, and I'm not, I can't remember exactly what a pound is. I think it's 440 grams, something like that. Um, uh, somewhere around there anyway. Um, but uh, maybe up to 450, who knows? I'll have a look on my scale. But anyway, I'm not even gonna round it off. It's such a small piece of clay. Just put it down on the bat. Uh, I have these white bats that I use for small plates. Um, I can use them for anything, but I like them because they tell me that something is the same size pretty much each time. But this one has to be small for a child, you know, like a two-year-old, a three-year-old, maybe, you know, a little older, potentially, I suppose. Um, but um, I don't think it's for a baby. But anyway, I'm just centering it, and if you're a beginner at pottery, then what you should do is cone it up, cone it down, move the clay around so you know you've got some ability to move that piece of clay and it tells you if you've got any air bubbles by that you'll feel them by doing that um, all right so you, you make a pancake flatten it down this hand stays on the bat so that this little thing is touching so is that part of my hand is touching the bat wet it liberally and push down with your top hand so you can see the ball of clay this hand just gets pushed out but it keeps a bit of compression back on that plate area I like to think these can be dropped and not break so I don't make them thin and that's pretty much it I, that's why I say it's not really meant for a tiny baby, but oops, I think there was a piece of dry clay there. Yeah, just there. That was probably stuck on my wheel actually, but um, and I had the back, the rubber rib down there. But anyway, pull that down. That just leaves a flat area for the stencils to go. And then little finger, top finger here. So the little finger is going to push in, and the top finger is going to allow the little finger to push up a little bit and make that little rim. Let's get some water on that edge there. We'll make a little edge there. Just somewhere where you can put the, pick the plate up a little bit. Get your fingers underneath to pick the plate up. It's not much of a rim, and this plate is probably only six inches, seven inches across. So it's a very small plate. Don't have a tape measure. Oh, I do. So where are my inches on here? Oh, it got centimeters too, I can tell you in both. So it's actually seven and a half now, so it's going to shrink to about six, six and a half when it's finished, which in centimeters is 19 centimeters across. And that's it, that's the little plate. So I'm going to make 12 of these. Let's get it off the bat. And that's why I like them because now I can, just looking at that, I can tell the next one will be the same size. But I'm going to make a little tiny ball next. So just this one is actually half a pound of clay. It's probably too much clay actually, but 
I'm going to leave them a bit thick. So center it again, similar to you did that last ball. It's only half the weight, so it's easier to center. And make a hockey puck. Now I'm not going to push all the way down like I normally would because I'm trying to leave it thicker. So I've left a thicker base than I normally would have. And I might run my finger from about three o'clock back towards the center a couple of times to compress the bottom to stop any cracks developing. Fingers underneath. This, these fingers are going to be wet on the inside and these fingers go in and push hard and then these fingers give way and the fingers will come up. And these angled at 45 degrees, so it encourages the clay to lift over my fingertips and get higher. Not flat like that, because that wouldn't do much then. So at 45 degrees, wet both fingertips, push in, start your pull. So the outside fingers are slightly lower down on the piece than the inside fingers. It's getting dry, so I'm gonna let go slowly. Two fingers on the outside and dribble the water right on those fingers so you know it's on inside and outside and then push in deep again with the inside fingers giving way and the outside fingers coming to the top and that's plenty big enough for a child maybe that's big enough for an adult for ice cream too oh no not that much <laughs> this one scoop all right so just gonna even the clay out so I grabbed the moisture in the bottom, ran it up to the top so that it's very equal, e even moisture on the inside clay wall itself because I'm not going to wet my fingers next time. And I'm going to simply bend this rib into a, a sort of a curve and I'm going to put this underneath and make that wall follow that curve. and bend in a little bit at the top. So you've got that nice profile of the bowl. And then this is a really smooth clay. Just roll the sponge over the top. So there's no grit in this clay at all. So there's no reason for me to use a leather to actually smooth the rim. And we've got a nice piece. So throw a little bit of water on the back and then turn it slowly, pull towards yourself and it will release and you can take it off the wheel easily. I'll show you a different way for the mug as well. And then you lift it off and that's the shape of the bowl. And that's a little big I think for a child but it is gonna shrink by about 15%, so. All right, now we need a coffee mug. For a child, they won't be drinking coffee out of it. Here's an old mug I did actually, but um, speaking of coffee, okay, a little coffee mug. Center again, left hand right on the back of the, of the that you're throwing on, with the top hand revealing half the clay, and press tight and hard. And you don't want to let it stick to your fingers, so you make sure you, you don't try and do that with dry clay because it will pull the, the ball off the wheel. Dribble some water on and center again. So that left hand stays in contact with the bat all the time. And you reveal half the clay so you can see what, you, what you're doing as well as feeling it. Okay, left hand stays the same. Find the center and push down. Don't go all the way to the bottom like you normally do. Leave it a bit thicker. I like, as I said, I don't want this to be dropped. Nothing will survive if you drop it onto a concrete floor, but if you drop this on a carpeted floor or soft linoleum, hopefully it won't break if you leave it a little thicker. Because it's a child. So anyway, push in with the end outside fingers, but not like you did for the ball, but still push in a little bit and then bring the wall up so the outside fingers are lower down than the inside fingers. Come up, let go at the rim, dribble some water right on the rim so it goes in and out. This is not going to go real high either as a child's mug. So, and you push out with your inside fingers to widen it a touch. Now push with the inside, outside fingers 
just to get a bit more height and then let go slowly. Put your finger right on the rim to compress the rim. You don't have to make this shape a mug either. You can make any shape mug, but as long as it's thick for a child. And then this is how I make that bottom so I don't have to trim the shape. And then just dribble some water in and use the rib again, but not making a curve this time. I'm simply pushing out against it with my inside fingers just to get rid of the moisture and then dig in the edge with the angle to get yourself a, a double lip, like a tankard lip as we call it. So you've got that shape there. And then if you have a smaller sponge on a stick or something, you can use that for this, but I just use my sponge. I can reach with my finger all the way to the bottom. So I just dragged all the water out. If I was using gritty clay, I would actually use a leather. And I have a tool that Freddie Moretti made me to do that with as well. But this clay is like porcelain, it doesn't need it. So, okay, now here's a different way. Now I'm not gonna, if you dry that out as you did there, you only you'd throw water across that. And you can also take them off just by turning without water so it releases. Get your flat metal tool put it underneath and lift it up a touch and then you can lift it just like that you know that's just as easy to get it off the bat and you, that way you don't have all the water on the bottom so I just did the thing I'll do two more just so you can see So just you're feeling for the, any any inconsistencies in the clay when you first do this. You want to make sure there's no air bubble and there's no hard bits of clay. And then center it. Hole in the center. Go down, not too far. Bring it out a little bit towards your hand. Flatten that bottom area there. Just kind of giving the. It's got to stay with a curve since it's a bowl, but we just. Pull your finger from three o'clock to the center just to compress the clay in the bottom. Wet it both in and out. Outside fingers dig in deep and you do a pull. Not too thin. Wet by dribbling right on the rim so it goes in and out. Dig in deep with your outside fingers and pull out, but not really hard. You're trying to keep it smaller and a little thicker. This would still hold a scoop of ice cream when it's fired. So I feel like this is totally adequate for a child to use for cereal. I also write the name of the child, the birth date and stuff like that on the bottom of the plate. That's why I call it children's set and it's bought mostly for birthdays and Christmas. There's a lot you can do to these too if you want to make it more special. I actually saw one once where somebody wanted to bring a baby in to press their hands into the clay. On the plate only though. So this is the one you can do also with your wire. No water. Pull it through, it's moved anyway, and then sort of lift this underneath and just lift up a tiny bit and it will lift up. It sticks to the, the rib basically. And then you can place it right on, see it hasn't deformed, place it right onto that. Now both ways of taking a pot off the wheel work, so it's just a preference. Okay, this is the mug really quickly. So I'm just kind of feeling just to see what the, there's a lump and there's this clay has been beautiful. This is B-Mix 5 from Laguna Clay Company. It's my favorite clay, but it doesn't do well at cone 6. Push down and push out. That's why they call it B-Mix 5, I guess. 
It's okay with some pieces, but I've noticed that um, when anybody returns a piece for crack, for some sort of cracking kind of thing, um, it's always this clay when it's fired to cone six in a stoneware glaze on it. And it's only certain colors and it's rare. So I've decided to use the 516 stoneware clay for stoneware pieces because I think that clay is a little stronger. Okay, then push in. Now you've got your foot pre-made, so almost no trimming necessary. Dribble some water on it. Push the outside out a little bit just to give yourself a bit more volume on this metal rib. Push in at the top, a centimeter down. Lift the rib, go a bit higher, and push in again, and you give yourself that tankard rim. Now, I sell these mugs as espresso mugs. They're a bit big for an espresso, but people ask me for you know, to buy these separately from my children's sets. So I'm going to make a whole bunch of extras of these. And um, probably, I mean, if people want them for espresso, they're not going to really want cats or a rabbit on them. But, um, but I've learned my lesson. I need to have a bunch of these made as well, just so people don't break up my sets. Pulling through. Rib pushed in. Lift up a touch, just so you can get your fingers onto it, and then you can lift it off. Okay, now I'm going to pull the uh, handles. Uh, so I just pulled off about a pound of clay, um, and I only need 12 very small handles here. So, And I've done regular handles before, but not this small, so let's see what we do. Um, let me get you down to the bucket here. So I got a bucket of water just underneath. It's slip actually. And all you do is as normal with big handles, but just going to be a lot more gentle and I've got to pull a lot thinner. So pulling handles is just establishing a gap between your thumb and your, your hand that the clay has to slide through. So if you hold a very narrow gap, you'll get a narrow handle. If you hold a a roundish hole between your fingers you'll get a sort of round like a coil handle but you can choose how you want to do it I've always done this technique where I rotate the clay constantly to try and keep it even and basically make a, a little gouge with my thumb there Poubelle just sneezed but um, basically just Pull down and there's always a lump builds up at the end which you have to work on otherwise you'll snap the handle off so just kind of work on that little bit right at the end there and you've got to judge it you know very small coffee mugs for kids that are like three four three to five years old is my estimate with these sets so we don't want a big handle. We don't want it too thin either, otherwise it'll, when they drop it, it'll break off. So let's get this up a little higher, you can see a bit more then. Okay, so that I'm going to snap off about there. My fingers are a bit wet, so I just want to make sure you don't drop it. And you put it down on there, and then, because it's so long, I just have to work on the bottom. Keep turning it round. It's a strap handle still, but you can dry your fingers a little bit so you can actually pull the handle off without it slipping out of your hands. Okay, that's it. Those are the handles. So um, next I'll actually uh, attach them. Probably wait about 15 minutes for them. Okay, now we're gonna put the handles on. I wanna show you this. This is still movable. 
but it's not leaving my fingerprint when I touch it. So that means it's perfect because it's, it's tacky but not sticky uh, and I don't have to score and scratch. So all I have to do to join a handle is wet it, take one of those handles that I just pulled, just a tiny little strap, thicken the edge a little bit. I usually just tap it down a little bit and then place it so that it's just over the top of that double lip, the tankard edge. It's not a lip, it's actually just a, sh a little lump around the pot. And then just using my fingers, I force it down to attach with my finger behind to push back. And then put my finger holding it, measure it. Remember it's for a child, so don't want it really big. Easy to grab, but not over big. So this, And then I take the bottom, snap a little piece off, curl that up, and then this little bit I make into a little wedge. It's just an instant thing, basically, but make a wedge, and then I put it in that little gap there, and that's because I'm going to put slip on these. I use a clean brush on the inside, wet my thumb, uh, I could reach this with my finger, I bet, anyway. Yeah, I can. But basically, just so I don't make any horrible marks on the piece on the rim, my fang my, I catch it with my finger, I usually put a brush down there and just push my thumb and push back with the brush and try not to push too hard with the brush so you leave a mark, but just enough to give you some resistance. And then I smudge that handle in because it's much softer at the bottom. These were only thrown an hour, an hour and a half ago. So they're pretty moist. And then I use the back of the handle, push that little wedge into there. The reason I do this is over years I found out that the slip has less of a shrinkage. I gave the recipe out in the last video, I think. Uh, it's got some frit in it and some potash felspar, and it actually shrinks less than the clay does. So it, it, it tends to crack if it's got to bend too much in a corner or a crevice. So um, so I've always put a little piece of clay to soften that corner down there. And then I'm just using the back of the handle. You can use the ferrule of the handle if you want to, but it, it's a bit bigger. So I usually use the back of the handle and I smudge it in. And I try to pull the clay from the handle up that little area there. And then using the brush, the brush itself, I just smooth that out. You like to feel like the handle is growing out of the pot. Whenever anybody says they've broken a handle of mine, it never is where I join it. It's always broken up here because the join area is so well joined and thick that basically the handle is going to crack where it's thinnest to release the stress, relieve the stress of when it's dropped, whatever. There we go. And then, you know, I, I'm saying I do these for children so that, um, you know, I'm inspiring a, another generation to like handmade pottery. Um, and I still like the idea of my little thumb print, little ball of clay, so the child has the same thing as the adult. And then you just push that in down there and you can use any one, any kind of stamp you want to stamp that. It's like a signature thing on my pieces these days. And I put a little stamp in there. Does it look good? Yep. So you've got a nice little child's tankard and all that. I think this would hold, oh, not much, a quarter of a pint. Not even that probably by the time it's shrunk and all that. But um, there you go. Anyway, I've got to do 12 of these now. So I'll um, show you the, the next step. We'll be stenciling them. Okay, it's the following morning and I had to keep things overnight um, and um, damp because uh, I, uh, I couldn't finish them. It was 6.30 and I hadn't finished all of the pieces. This little girl is really hungry at the moment because 
I have to give her medicine in the morning and she doesn't like the food when it's got medicine in it so it, it's our morning fight I have to I have to pretend I don't care and she gets more and more affectionate until she thinks she can get a real food and I just keep stirring it up but um, but she <laughs> she just can smell the medicine in the food I guess and all that. so oh, she's going back to it it's a it's a, a battle of wills here I think okay Hard to see, it's sunny this morning. Anyway, um, these are the plates and the children's sets I threw. So what I do this uh, now is I stencil these ones because they're gonna have animals on them. So I have my little paper stencils, which I dip in water and place them around the plates. They have to be wet and they, they expand as you put them down with the moisture. It's a really fiddly process. I don't do a lot of these anymore because um, and it's only because somebody just asked me for a, a little girl's one. I do them blue and uh, sort of, actually I'll do them any color people want, but, um, but these ones are gonna be blue and uh, red. I don't know why red. It's actually crimson, I think the actual color is called. It's a mason stain. But I place the pieces of paper down. Let's get you a little higher so maybe you can see a bit easier. And then I use a sponge, which has got some moisture in it. And they, they wrinkle, so you've got to completely get rid of all the wrinkles, because the moisture in the paper makes it expand. And then you press them down another wrinkle. If you leave a wrinkle, the color will bleed underneath it. I think I won the battle because she's eating the food now. It's just a little pill which I crunch into a powder and put mix it in with the food. But the vet said it sometimes can be a little bitter tasting for them. But it's keeping her alive. Okay, and then I take a brush and you've got to make sure you do not have any, the sponge is to push the paper down so it doesn't move anymore. And the, uh, that's the sponge, and then the brush just makes sure that there's no wrinkle anywhere. But, um, there we go. So there's no wrinkles, it's completely smudged into the clay. This clay is soft, I mean, it's basically still movable on the rim. So, um, the mugs and the bowls are a little different. Um, I use a smaller paper stencil for these. Oh, I have a little sniffy nose this morning as well. I was outside gardening the other day, cleaning up the greenhouse. It's down to zero every night at the moment. And uh, we haven't gone, gone below zero, thank goodness. I still have roses flowering in the garden. And um, the impatience finally caved in and said good night. But, um, but I still have some daisies and roses out in the garden. And uh, this week is supposed to be okay, but it's starting to get cold. I mean, I think that uh, we've had a very long fall, so I'm not going to complain. And so I'm putting paper all the way around, um, and I have a variety of the... Somebody asked me about cutting, it's a pain to cut these stencils. And that's partly why I don't do this technique very more, much anymore. I actually have grown away from the sort of hard edges of these. I really much prefer doing just glaze work now. But I made my living for 25 years doing pieces similar to this a whole variety of decorative pieces that I used to make with different animals, fish, birds, and whatever. Doing craft fairs in the United States. 
Uh, let's see, I don't have any jumping cats in here. I usually have some that are leaping to give a bit of energy to the pieces. This one's, there's one there, but it's a different style. I'll use one of these again. It's a continuous run of these all the way around. Because I actually called the design Prowlers. I, there you go. I had to develop a, a name for the pieces. It seemed like there was a demand for that, so I just called them Prowlers. And then the same thing. I can't sponge these down as easily because so I just move straight to the brush. But it is a matter of getting rid of every wrinkle and that is quite time consuming. And then I just dip them in slip. You can hold them upside down and dip them into slip so you just get it on the outside. You can airbrush them, you can brush them on, you could sponge it on. There's a whole bunch of ways you can apply slip. Anything works and gives you a different look. So it's up to you to experiment. You could do crisscross um, brush strokes in different directions to give a cross hatching effect. I mean, there's this, you know, it's unlimited and all that. So, uh, but that will resist anything you do. And, and here, here is my um, biggest enemy with stencil. She gets little cat fur pieces on the pieces and they look like black lines in the actual decoration, which always looks like a crack or something. So I have to be very careful I don't get cat fur in these. And uh, it's just another element of the tedium uh, with this technique. But, um, but anyway, you'll see the stencil removing next because applying the color is just whatever you want to do and all that. All right. She's back. Anyway, um, I've now, I actually airbrushed my pieces, sprayed them, um, and uh, you can dip these pieces. Uh, you could, like I said, you could do a textural brush effect on the pieces. There's lots of ways of applying slip. Um, the simplest way is to wait till they're a little firm so you can turn them upside down, grab them by the bottom and dip them in some slip. And then you don't get anything on the inside, which is actually kind of nice because then the inside of these pieces would be white. But there's some overspray there in the blue, and I have to try and make that neat by spraying down on the inside, which in turn wets the pieces down quite a bit because they've got color on both sides of the wall. Uh, so dipping is the preferable way, but because I'm production, spraying is faster. So, um, so I actually do that. <laughs> but um, and it's only slip; it's liquid slip. So. Um, Alright, so what I do next, and I do this as fast as possible, let's get you down a bit lower. I like these hearts, I've talked about it before in other videos, because you can do it all one-handed. Um, let's get so I can let you see this. Um, you can even do it holding it up in the air and just pushing the heart through. So you, you only have to cut through these, and I usually do it while they're still fairly soft. Uh, if you do it twice, you know, it releases it a little bit easier. Make sure you don't, you know, catapult it across the room. Um, but um, they're a bit soft at the moment because these were actually airbrushed twice, um, about an hour apart, maybe an hour and a half apart. But I can actually lift them. It's, it's not tacky on the rim. And then I place them on a clean board um, to actually complete the drying. But I wouldn't do this if there was any chance of leaving the actual fingerprint. Okay, so if you can... I have to sit out of view a little bit. All right, so they're very wet, uh, and it's better to wait a little bit longer than this so that they're not completely um, wet, because if you make a mistake at this stage, um, the clay is so soft it'll easily make a mark. So it's better to wait a bit longer, but let's just show you what happens. I can peel it off now. Give 
you a chance to see it a bit better. The paper is soft and it kind of tears a bit too easy. But I'll give you the because you're probably going to be impatient when you first try this technique and you'll probably want to get it off as soon as you can, but it's better to wait. That one was better. But, um, but it is better to wait until the paper is a little bit drier, but not wrinkling. You don't want the paper to be wrinkling up. There you go. And these ones are rabbits. I've done cats and rabbits. Um, and they're for children. I figured that's appropriate. Children with little rabbits and small cats. You could do dogs, you can do birds, you can make tortoises, you might, I mean, and hedgehogs, whatever you want to do. Uh, whatever paper stencils you want to cut, basically. Um, but that's the basic technique. Okay, this is now the following day. And these plates have actually firmed up enough so that I can actually move them. They're a little loose on the bat there. There you go, released. And that's from cutting it off yesterday. Um, so I'm not sure if you can see this, but the paper now is easier to remove. And there's no risk of it sticking if it falls back down because the clay is actually touch dry. I can actually touch it and it doesn't leave a mark so this is the more perfect time to remove a paper stencil um, when it's super wet the risk is just that it tears and drops back down but at this stage which is you know when the clay isn't dry it's just uh, not even quite leather hard yet but it's touch dry and you can take the stencils off very easily and then the same with the balls um, oh this is a rabbit one do I have a cat one here so the bowls, the paper just lifts off, usually in one piece. If you make them, make them overlap just a tiny bit, when you pull one off, it generally pulls all of them off. Just like it did there, it overlapped enough so that it actually when a piece dropped down on the plate, so I can just take it right off because it's not sticky anymore. And I will trim these probably sometime in the next hour, maybe hour and a half. So this will sit on here. I can't at the moment because it might leave a mark if it's a little bit of pressure. And then this is one of the little tiny baby mugs. People use these, as I said, I use, I'll have to make some spares of these because people ask to separate the mug from the set and then I don't have a full set anymore. And I always say, well, I'll just make another one, but I never do. There's too much to do and remember. So timing, as in all clay production, is everything. It's probably better not to hold it up in the air like this, but I think you can see it a little easier this way. And I'm holding it up so the light above is catching the edge of the paper so I can see it, because it's really hard to see the edges of the paper if the piece is wet too. When it's dry like this, it actually uh, is a little easy to see the edges. And then the plate, just blow the pieces off. Okay, um, at this point I just wanted to say that um, one of my subscribers has been with me right from the beginning when I started putting my videos out there. Um, his name is Freddie Moretti. And I just wanted to post a few photographs um, just before I do this video on the pieces coming out, um, just to let everybody see what it's like to be a really, you know, down-to-earth, great sort of little studio potter working in his own, you know, shed, garage type setup, 
Um, it's basically, it shows what anybody can do um, if they put their mind to it, to put a little studio together in their own home and make it look, it looks like it's so efficient with everything there. Um, and it's, uh, it makes you feel good that people are still just setting these things up on their own, getting going and making some nice pieces. So well done, Freddie. It looks like a really nice bunch of work. Uh, and, and good for you, you're making money for charity too with all those pieces. It looks like, you know, what I can see with the signage and everything. So, um, so go Freddy. All right. So I hope you like looking at his work as well. All right, so this is the, uh, the children's set pieces coming out of the kiln. Um, and um, I didn't show trimming them because, you know, I've shown lots of videos of how I trim my pots. Um, but you did see all the decorative part of it. And I've got the blue because of this order I did for somebody. I did it in red and blue. It's not a pink. I mean, I, 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 I do the red instead of the pink because it's, uh, you don't want to stereotype boys and girls, of course. But these two are really nice red and a really nice blue. Um, so they're all the same. I don't need to meander. Oops. They're all on stilts fired. Um, the underglaze I signed the pieces with is right there. It shows up really well on a clear glaze or over under a clear glaze. Um, this is so, I, I you know, this is, I did this for nine, ten years, nothing but clear glaze with stencils and decorative pieces on. Uh, so this glaze, I've got it working really good. It's on B-Mix clay, all these children's sets, B-Mix 5. And this is a great little kiln from Pottery Supply House. It's a Euclid kiln. I bought this three, four years ago. And I just had to change one of the elements in it. It's been really reliable. There's the blue mugs, cats and also rabbits. I do the children's sets in both of those. I figure that children like cuddly, cute little animals. And like I said, I'm doing this you know, for kids because, um, oh, and here's an old color I tried out. This is a salmon that I got from a Mason Stain company. I don't know, if, or maybe this is an odd piece. Um, I'll have to see what I have here, but there's another mug I did it with it. Um, it's called salmon, a stain. I had a lot left over of this, but, um, well, I should say not very much left over of that one. I'll get these out of here, because they're all I do for cooks, rabbits and cats in the clear glaze. I'm trying to dig deep, because I've got mugs down in the bottom here, more rabbits and cats. like I did do an actual set in that salmon. Here we go. And most of them are, there's the red as well. Now, this is what I do. I sign them fairly small in the center of the plate, and then I draw, put this on a banding wheel, and I circle it and make a little brown circle there and another circle bigger up there, and then using a chalk, uh, not chalk, a laundry marker, permanent marker, um, I actually uh, write the child's name and the date of the child's birthday on there, and you can write the age or anything else you want to do on them. 
Um, so, and it becomes a children's set to celebrate that child's birthday or birth date, you know. So, um, anyway, I just wanted to finish up. There's blue ones in here for the mugs with the cats and the rabbits as well. But I just wanted to give you a quick look at what they look like uh, as a set. So, um, I can actually show you since I got this, this one out here. Little children set. So that it's meant so that the, it's not for a young, you know, fresh-born baby or anything. It's meant for like a two to five-year-old, I guess you'd say. It's a very small coffee mug for juice. All right. So, uh, all right. So uh, that was the end of this video. I'm glad you. Um, I, ho I hope you liked it. Um, and um, and if you uh, you know want any have any questions or anything like that, just give me a shout. I, I try to answer all the questions that people throw at me, but uh, sometimes I've answered many of them multiple times in different videos. So I've photographed uh, pages in my glaze book so that if somebody wants a glaze recipe, I don't have to go search it out. I can just paste that photo into an email. So if you have a glaze question, just send me an email. All right. Thanks very much. It's vsmithpots at eastlink.ca. It's at the end of the video. All right. Um, I hope you like this little snippet of my raccoon. All right. I'm being very bad, I guess. But anyway, Rocky is doing really well and enjoying the cookie. Bye. Come on, Rocky. Come on. Come on, Rocky.